So PRRT is a therapy, it's also called peptide receptor radiotherapy, that's what PRRT stands for. And essentially what it is, is it takes a tiny little bit of radiation and it links it to a protein. Uh, and then we give that radiation actually by intravenous, by IV. And so I tell my patients it's like a lock and a key. So our tumors, our neuroendocrine cancers, have sort of little locks on the outside of the cell. And then when we put that therapy, which I call the key, um, through the vein, it actually will go, it will bind the lock, and then the key gets drawn inside, and then actually the radiation will kill the tumor cell. And it's merely using what we've understood for years in biology of having this molecule that binds specifically the neuroendocrine tumors and using that binding to hand deliver a radioactive isotope that can then kill the cell by radiation. September 29th, uh, 2017, uh, the Lutathera, this therapy was approved in Europe. Um, so I think that's quite exciting. And uh, this was based on the Netter 1 study um, and safety data from over 1,200 patients. Basically, 80% uh, chance of not progressing on Lutathera. So that's highly, highly significant. And in the world of oncology, this is probably one of the very best outcomes of one of the very best hazard ratios we've ever seen. If the patient comes in, they check into our apartment. The first thing we do is we put IVs and check labs in the patient, make sure there's no abnormality. Then we start this aminosin 2, the amino acid solution, and that goes for four to five hours. So the radiation, the dota takes, starts about a half an hour after the amino acid solution, maybe 30 to 60 minutes in, and it only takes about 30 minutes. Some patients may be scared of having uh, radiation, but the radiation that's given is about 60 times more to the tumor than to a lot of other normal tissues. We are administering quite a large dose of radiation to patients. The amount of radiation coming out of your body right after therapy is less than that of getting an MDP bone scan or an octrea scan. So just keep in mind the relative amount of radiation that's coming out of you uh, that would interact with people nearby you isn't terribly high. For hematologic toxicity, I think this to me is the most concerning aspect of toxicity in these patients. So the long-term toxicity is that you can develop myelodysplastic syndrome or leukemia associated with these treatments. And you can see that about 19 out of 807 patients, and this is out of European data, obviously we haven't treated 807 patients in the United States, uh, about 19 of them, 2.4% of patients are developing these pretty significant uh, long-term, uh, in essence, uh, neoplastic syndromes of the bone marrow. And leukemia is a, obviously a very serious complication that can occur up to 1% of patients. So the care of patients with advanced neuroendocrine tumors, those who are not candidates for resection for surgery, uh, will likely be impacted by this therapy. Uh, it will represent another option for therapy beyond treatments that are mainly symptomatic. The tools in the toolbox keep growing, and now those treating nets have more options and patients have more options. Essentially, it's a life-prolonging therapy with a very favorable a reduction of risk of progression and a very favorable toxicity profiles. So this therapy is a significant advance versus other therapies which had been less effective.